This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, the Playbook, and I have a legend of the MMA and of the big screen, George St. Pierre. Everyone knows GSP, and it's good to have you here on the Playbook. How are you, George? I'm always doing good when I'm talking to you. <laughs> I love it. Well, we, uh, we're excited because you are a true example of how skills, knowledge, and desire transcends whatever we try to do. It's a, a matter of looking within what we have control of, our mindset, our heart set, and those skills that we're talking about. For you, how have you been able to look within as you have had a legendary career in the octagon and now on the big screen, how have you been able to transcend those skills and the knowledge and also the desire to want to be the best at what you're doing? I think that you cannot be satisfied. Uh, satisfaction is the end. So when I retired from my uh, professional career in, in mixed martial art, I, uh, it was easy for me because a lot of people, they retired and they, they turn around, they have nothing else. You need to have an objective, long-term objective and short-term objective. And right away, I, I my objective when I, when I retired, I, I right away had another goal in my life. So it keeps me busy. I was not satisfied. And by not being satisfied, it keep you motivated, keep you working, striving towards something. And that's, I think, in my opinion, the biggest mistake of what athletes are doing once they retired, a lot of them, unfortunately, they end up on drugs, and, and and like 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 a lot of time they say oh it's because of brain damage it could be but i think also it's because we're used as professional athletes especially in combat sport to face incredible life threatening situation and when we stop we don't we don't feel alive anymore it's like life is boring because we don't have those peak of intensity in our life i think you need to turn around and find another goal, what you want to do, you know, of course, fighting, you can't do it all, all, all your life because time will catch up to you. But what else do you want to accomplish? And now me, for me personally, it was to turn into movie. And like I, when I started my career, when I said to my friend, I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to be champion in UFC. They all, they all laughed at me. They all, they ne nobody took me seriously. And now it's a little bit the same thing, but gradually I'm, um, I'm starting to, to get better and improve my game. Yeah, well, you know, starring and playing in Marvel's The Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Disney Plus's What If is a really good start. But when to retire, you know, I ran the most notable sports agency in the world, Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment, which they made their own movie about, Jerry Maguire. You're probably too young to even know it, but... Uh, no, uh, no, I, I know exactly. It's a very good movie. <laughs> well, good. Well, you know, one of the things that we've dealt with is when to retire, and I was a little bit fearful for my friend Tom Brady, thinking that maybe he was holding on a little too long. And now once again, he won another Super Bowl and yet he's gonna play another season. How do you feel about continuing your career when you have other things that you can accomplish? You know, when should somebody retire, uh, you know, in, for example, you know, their career, if they still have some juice left, but maybe not as much as they had? Well, we make an analogy, Tom Brady, it was amazing. Like everybody thought he should have maybe retired, but he, he proved everybody wrong. Also, there is a difference because he plays American football and he's a quarterback. He, he's a specialist in air play, you know? <laughs> if it would be more a, of a runner, maybe it would be a different story because it would put himself more in, in jeopardy. But he's an incredible athlete, the best of, the best of all time, I would, I would say to my opinion. Uh, in fighting, is. It depends on your style of fighting. My style of fighting, I'm, I'm someone who does not take a lot of damage normally in my fight. And the same thing in my training. I never, you know, I train in, in a smart way. I, I rather train smart than train hard. I think it's more important. So I was able to last longer in the game. But it's always the, the in, I was always in the dilemma in, 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 in between, mm -hmm. oh, should I do more or should I stop? Because even now I feel I could probably go back and compete amongst the elite and maybe be champion again. 
but I'm 40 years old and my life has changed. I have other priority now. And um, doors are open for a great after career. And if I, the risk is not worth it for me to go and risk it all. It's not worth it. So it's about balance and, and trying to measure the, the pros and cons. And um, sometimes it, it, it's also emotional. You need, I believe, to do what makes you happy. But fighting, I never loved to fight. I never enjoyed it. I fought because of my life, the freedom, the money. The, when I was younger, it was the, the, the girls, the, the, the fame and all that. You know, of course, I am not the same person I was when I was 20 years old. But I did it to, because I like the lifestyle, you know, and, and the freedom. Now I'm not the same person. I, I like the freedom, of course, and, and, and everything. But I, 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 I had a lot of money, but I, I, my priority has changed. So, so it, it's just to measure the pros and cons and what you want in your life, you know. So I use fighting to obtain what I wanted to have in order to, to get there. And there's many more options when you finish uh, your career on top. Was that a consideration when you were thinking about retiring that there's so many opportunities, especially in acting right now, because my brand is so strong. It's identified with the champion. It's identified with the legend. You know, yes. there was a lot more to risk because there may not be opportunities if you hung on, even if you could continue. Yeah, I, I, it's a sad thing that a lot of athletes in my sport and also in boxing and combat sport, they don't finish on top. Because in my entourage, of a lot of people gain when I fight because they touch a percentage of money so, or exposure. So everybody that are linked into a business relationship with me, it's good for them for me, if I, if I continue to fight because they gain. However, you need to be able to listen your, perhaps your family, your real friends. And I, I'm very lucky. I have great friends. I have the same friends I, I have that I 25 years ago when I was not known. I have the same people around me. And also it's, it's a lot of athletes, even if they're a legend in the sport, a lot of them, they retire too late. So what happened is I, com I compare fighters or athletes very often to stock market. Your stock goes high sometimes when you're very successful, but no matter how high you can go, it could go down. And you don't want to retire when your stock is down because you close doors and op opportunities for yourself. And I was aware of it. So I wanted to retire on top when my stock was the at the highest. So when I retired, even though in the back of my mind, maybe I could keep going and fight more and, and get, win more fight. It was the better, the best decision to stop so I can turn around and have opportunities and doors are wide open for me for an after career. And you mentioned, you know, having friends for 25 years and everybody sees success like yours, both in the octagon and outside on the big screen as, you know, an overnight success. But for you, People laughed at you. They made fun of you, and they still do. Uh, and they did for me when you know I started on my own brand and my own career. And you know, I think one of the biggest attributes is believing in ourselves. You know, people laugh at you, scoff at you, make fun of you, but then they applaud you. You know, at what age did you decide that you weren't going to listen to what other people wanted for you? What's missing? What you don't want? The the whispers in your ear, the negative thoughts, and the chatter. How were you able to overcome those at a young age to get you to be a champion? And then now I think it's even more difficult when you're 40 years old and you're, you know, telling them you're going to be a movie star. Well, I, I don't blame them, by the way, because if you look at the odds, the odds of success in my field of my business and your business are very low, extremely low. So I don't blame them because according to the odds, they, they just... Look at the odds and they tell me as a friend, hey, the odds are not in your favor. So you should not put your energy and focus on it. However, I was very passionate about it and I did the right thing. And on top of that, I worked really hard and I, I, I was fortunate enough to meet great mentors that changed my life. So it's a combination of a lot of things. It's not a straight line. And. 
you can beat the odds. It's the same thing that sometimes, just to be the devil advocate, like some parent come to me with their kids and they tell me, hey, George, this is my kid. He's gonna, he's gonna be the future world champion. Do you have any advice for him? And I look at the kid and I tell him, kid, are you going to school? He says, yes. Focus on school. That's the most important thing. Keep training, keep, keep doing whatever, whatever you, you do, but don't put your eggs all in the same basket. And the parents very often, they look at me like very strangely because I guess a lot of the athletes keep telling the, 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 the kids the same thing. Oh, go ahead, go for it. But I'm not going to say that. It's not because I made it that I'm going to tell your kid to, to choose the same path and your kid's going to make it. The odds are against it 100%. 99.99999. And the same thing, not only in fighting, in football, baseball, uh, uh, everything, business, entrepreneur, everything. The odds are against you. You need to beat the odds. Uh, and if you put, the reason I'm saying to the kids to stay at school is because if you put all his eggs in the same basket, only focusing on sport, it could be any other sport or anything, and you get hurt down the road or something happened that is uh, not expected, and he's in late 20s or early 30s, it's too late. He has nothing else that he can fall back into. His life is ruined. It, it, not ruined, but it, it's, it's going to be even harder. So what I'm saying is, yes, train in karate. Pursue, go to, the, to pursue your dream. Make it big. But don't abandon education. Education should be your number one priority as you grow up. And it, this is the smartest way to do it. And I, I understood that when I was young, I was educated, but at one point in my life, I made the choice. I was able to, when I was 16 years old, I made a choice to go into MMA. I stay educated, but when I had my first title shot, I had a talk with my parents. I said, listen, I had an opportunity of a lifetime now here. I have to let go of school just to train full time. And my parents agreed with it. I said, if it doesn't work, I can always go back to school. But this door that just opened for me for a title shot might not come back. So I did it late in my life. I didn't do it when I was a kid. I didn't, I didn't drop out when I was a kid. I did it late. And that's, I think, the right way to do it. Yeah, prepare for your best, but also mitigate the risk as you move forward. Now, You've had so many proud moments in the octagon, outside the octagon. I always love to equate the balance in life of priorities by asking someone who's been successful, you know, as a Kobe Bryant uh, in America, you know, from Academy Awards to the basketball court to, you know, just as a student, he did so well. For you, you know, where's your proudest moment? Is it in the octagon, outside of the octagon? What do you value most? I'm going to tell you the truth. If you look at my, if you look at, for example, my social media and all my interview and all that, I'm a public figure, so I keep everything in, in, that is related to my work, like public. But everything that is related to my family, to my, my clothes, my, my, my inner circle, I keep it very private. But that's the thing that I'm the most proud of. But that's the thing that I don't share in public also. I use my, my work, my, my career to make myself very happy for my family, for my, my private life. As good as my public uh, appearance and, and career is, it's nothing. My private life is a million times better than my career. It's not even close. But that, that's my proudest thing. What, is, what I keep secret for me is my proudest thing, my accomplishment, not in my life, in my career, in public, what I have in private. And that's for me, that's, that's like a diamond. That, that's that's my, my proudest thing. And it should be, and I love the fact that it is. But more importantly, too, you know, you have the spirit of excellence. Uh, it's something, as I ran the most notable sports agency, uh, I saw in every athlete, entertainer, all the billionaires and millionaires and entrepreneurs that I've been blessed to be around, there's a spirit of excellence. There's this extraordinary desire that I need to reach my potential. I call it the enjoying 
of the consistent, everyday, persistent, without quit, pursuit of your own potential. And every great athlete and entertainer has it. For you, I always love to stress, how important is the consistency aspect, whether it was in the octagon to be a legendary fighter or on the big screen, you know, with Marvel or Disney, those are the biggest octagons of the screen. You know, how important was consistency beyond the talent that you obviously have? Consistency is, is, every, is very important. If, if you, first, I believe when you want to do something, you need a commitment. And once you commit, then after you need consistency. If you don't have commitment, you'll never start. And if you don't have consistency, you'll never finish. In mixed martial art, it's hard to be champion, but it's even harder to, to stay there. It's, you know, it's, it, it, a lot of guys, they become champion, but to stay there, it's very hard because everybody's studying you. You're, you're now the guy, you're the target. You have a target on your, on your back. So you need both. You need the commitment, serious commitment, ready to make the effort to, 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 to do what it needs to be done, but you need consistency. You know, it's like a life should be seen as a marathon and not as a sprint. That's great. Well, you know, for me, you know, you're a real life superhero to so many people. And then you play a superhero on the big screen. When I was a child, my favorite superhero was Batman uh, because his superpower was being rich. And I grew up so poor, I wanted to be like Batman. I wanted to be rich and go ahead and buy my superpowers and all the weapons and the cars and, and everything that he got. Plus, I thought, uh, you know, Batwoman was extremely uh, beautiful. So I, I, I like to be Batman as well. Uh, but more, <laughs> <laughs> who, who was your favorite superhero when you were young and why? You know what? I, I like Batman as well and Iron Man, but not for the same reason. That, than, than yours. I like Batman and Iron Man because they don't have superpower. What make them so good and successful and so strong, it's their intelligence. They use intelligence and perhaps technology as well to be able to fight against the most lethal villain in the DC comic or, or, or Marvel's universe. And inspiration from movies, you inspire so many people in the octagon, but you know, you're so talented on the screen and truly inspirational, especially to children, you know, giving them the right values to look up to and giving them right character, discipline and awareness, you know, to be successful and believe in yourself. One of my favorite movies is Rocky. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm older than you. So I, I've been there since the beginning, Rocky one. Uh, number one, are you, are you a Rocky fan? And if so, you know, in, in this series, what's your favorite Rocky? I like them all, but I'm a huge Rocky fan, and I, I'm a big fan of how Stallone transform Rocky into Creed. I thought I thought there was it was genius. And I know Sylvester Stallone, by the way, he, he's such a nice guy. He invited me over to uh, for a uh, Christmas at, at his house when I had uh, when I had my ACL surgery I couldn't go back home because of the the inflammation so I was stuck in Los Angeles and I was like limping and um, I the the uh, I think is is he's the brother-in-law of my surgeon so I, I, I he invited me over and I had a great time and I talked to him and very smart guy. I, 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 I love the Rocky. My favorite, to go back to your first question, I, I, I think my favorite one is the Ford, Rocky Ford, because that's perhaps his biggest challenge. I, I say the Ford, but I don't know. I like them all, I would say, for different reasons. And, and um, yeah, he's a very smart guy. And I remember when I had a conversation at his house, I, I asked Sylvester Stano, I said, Sometimes, you know, like I, I feel very scared, you know, when I like a lot of people are watching me, I, I, I feel like claustrophobic. Do you have any advice for me that you could because you, you've been around for a long time? How do, how do you deal with this? And he says to me that 
is, is I remember he says that he, he was uh, presenting an award at once and he started thinking, he's like, man, is everybody's, like millions of people are watching me. What is, if I, if I mess up, you know, it's going to look bad. And then he started thinking, he's like, they are watching me. I am not watching them. So it, it, it helps him to grow his confidence in a way. So he, he was able to deliver his message. And I, and, I, and I thought of it, I was like, yeah, that's like, that's a right way to put it. You know, when, when I, when I'm about to perform, you need sometime a, a self pep talk. So you can, you know, use that to, in order to, to grow your confidence and confidence is very important for an athlete, but also for, a, for an entertainer, for a performer, an entrepreneur, because you can have all the skills in, uh, in the world that you want, but if you don't have confidence, it's like someone who has a lot of money in his bank account but no way of accessing it. So you need the skills and the confidence. And this is, there was a very important lesson that he gave me uh, that day. You know, he is a very emotional person. I've been blessed to be around him as well. And you're an emotional person. I'm a, a big emotional mess. Uh, I have one last question. Have you ever cried when watching a Rocky or a Creed movie? Not, not cry. I, I, not cry, but I, I got, you know, when I see him trained, the, 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 the part of, of his movie that get me the most is because I grew up wanted to be champion in mixed martial arts. So the part that touched me the most, it's not really the fighting part or, 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 it's the part when he trains with the music. And I remember like, like I watched your movie and I, I almost, I want to train, you know what I mean? I'm like, dun, 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 dun. like it, it, it drive me to my core. It's insane. You know, like it was very, very well done. It certainly was. I still remember in Rocky II when Adrian tells him to win. As oh, he, yeah. Um, that, that was the emotional scene uh, for me. But. Win when then you hear the ring, bing, bing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a Rocky fan, ladies and gentlemen. The GSP, he is telling us the truth, and he is a champion in the octagon and on the big screen. I can't wait to see what you're doing with What If. Of course, the Marvel uh, unbelievable performance as the Falcon and uh, we look forward to a long, prosperous, exciting and inspirational, aspirational career on the big screen so we can share what you've been able to encompass, that spirit of excellence to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your incredible potential. Thank you so much, George. It's been an incredible playbook to success.